Good morning, everyone. First of all, I want to thank the, the Wialon team in name of my company for, for this invitation to be here in, in Dubai with you. Uh, my name is Fernando Blaja. I am Overseas Operations Director for AOBX. I'm based in Buenos Aires, Argentina. And we are this week in Dubai together with Gustavo Buffoni, our uh, Overseas Sales Director. Um, a new vision on tracking technologies is the name we chose for this presentation. And we will base it uh, first on a technical review of uh, location technologies uh, for the trackers. Okay? Uh, at the end of the presentation, we will speak about our products, but we, will, we want to, to highlight a special feature that our products have, and the technical review at the beginning is very important. Um, let me first uh, make a brief introduction to our company. Our company is a young company uh, that started four years ago in China. Um, it's a young company with a very professional and experienced team in the IoT business. Uh, our uh, CEO, Mr. Ricky Guo, he comes from the cellular module um, business as well as I do. And he built a great R&D team with people coming from the cellular industry, uh, from the tracker business too. And uh, one thing that I think it's, it's key for our products, our CTO uh, coming from the wearables business. Uh, as we st uh, speak with our customers and, and new partners, um, this new vision of the wearables technologies brought uh, to the tracker business, I think it's, it's very important, and we will talk about that. Okay, okay sorry for that. Okay, we will make a review of three positioning technologies that our trackers have available. Uh, we will go briefly through GNSS positioning. Of course, you know a lot of that because it's very used uh, since a lot of years. And then we will go to cellular LBS and finally to Wi-Fi LBS. Um, we will make a comparison about them and, and see some examples. Okay, GNSS positioning, as you all know, um, the satellites uh, that make constellations out of the globe transmit weak signals that are received by the by this uh, GNSS module, and based on that signal, it will it will get a latitude and longitude location in the globe. Um, of course, the highlights of this technology is that it has global coverage. It has a great accuracy of 2.5 meters and even better in, in newer generation of GNSS. And the position is solved locally by the GNSS module. But it also has some low lights, nothing is perfect. Uh, what low light do we have? It has a high power consumption, yes, and signals are weak. So this limits the scenario of usage. You have to have sky vision, at least partial sky vision, to, to be able to receive the signals. And in a lot of applications, especially in asset tracking, you may not have those conditions. The high power consumption we are talking about, of course, it's not critical for vehicle tracking, for example. Uh, for vehicle tracking, you have a, a, a big battery, external battery from the car that it's recharged every time. But when we talk about asset tracking, Yes, when you have an internal battery that may be rechargeable, but you want to recharge it uh, as, as less often as possible, uh, the high power consumption of several tens of milliampere of the GNSS, it's, it becomes a, a limitation. Cellular LBS, okay, cellular LBS is it's based on uh, the known location of the cellular cells you have in the cellular network. Okay, you have, when you transmit a packet, you have information about, about what cell are you connected to, and also you can have information about the neighbor cells. So with this information, signal strength and others, uh, finally the platform can convert those uh, cellular-based information to a latitude and longitude. Highlights of this technology, of course, it can work anywhere that a cellular network is available. 
what is the low light? That, that the, cellular uh, the cellular network signals are very long range signals, yes? So uh, the cellular network will give you an area where the device may be right now positioned, but that area may be very, very big of maybe hundreds of meters from the real position of the device. Finally, it's the Wi-Fi LBS. What, what is Wi-Fi LBS? Uh, maybe you are familiar with it, maybe someone not. Wi-Fi it's LBS It's something similar to what I explained uh, about cellular LBS, but instead of using the cellular network cells, we use the signals that come from the Wi-Fi routers around the tracker. Yes? Um, you detect the MAC addresses of the routers you, you have around, and you collect that data, and that MAC addresses, together also with signal strength, uh, can help you get a latitude and longitude of where your device is. What is the highlight of this? Of course, the calculated area of position is much smaller than the area of position that uh, the cellular LBS gives you. Why? Because there is something natural. The routers have, in average, uh, 20 meter or maybe less uh, radio of coverage, okay? So if you see uh, um, uh, the, uh, the MAC address of a Wi-Fi router, you can be sure that you are no, no farther than 20 meters from the router. So if you get that information, you are very accurate. Other highlight is the very low power consumption, especially compared to the GNSS. As I said, GNSS has, has uh, several tens of milliampers of consumption. In Wi-Fi, when we use Wi-Fi LBS, that Wi-Fi is not transmitting, it's only receiving, you have only some microamperes. So the battery, the power consumption is it's, uh, very, very small compared to GNSS. What are the low lights? Of course, nothing is perfect here, too. You have to have Wi-Fi routers installed in the, in the area where you want to locate the device. Of course, in the middle of the desert, you will not have Wi-Fi, so this is not good. Um, and what is the objective of this presentation? As we see in a comparison, uh, each technology has an advantage over the others. Wi-Fi LBS is the best for battery performance and indoor scenarios, okay? GNSS is best for outdoor scenarios, yeah, especially not in cities where you may not have Wi-Fi, and for outdoor scenarios where you need precision in the position, okay? Remember, it's the, of, of the three technologies, it's the one with uh, best accuracy in the position. Cellular LBS, of course, is best when you have no Wi-Fi, maybe in a country, and no GNSS, or you want to have better power consumption. What ABOX is proposing to you, uh, and in this way trying to bring new opportunities and develop new vertical units, is a combination of the three technologies, okay? All our trackers, I will show more details of, of them right now, uh, have these three options available. So, for example, if you have an asset tracker, okay, you have an asset tracker where um, you want to have a long battery autonomy. You want to monitor um, a static asset, okay, so you want to uh, be sure it's always in the same place. You can use Wi-Fi, LBS, turn off the GNSS, this you can do it by programming, and you can detect the GNSS, uh, the Wi-Fi LBS location. If you detect that you lost the Wi-Fi location, maybe you have no Wi-Fi's or you detect the change, you can turn to a tracking mode, okay? Turn on the GNSS, knowing this will impact in the, in the battery autonomy, but to have a, very, a better accuracy in case you want to track online that, de that, tra that device that may have stolen. Another, another uh, use for this, maybe for vehicles, yes? In vehicles also, you have some scenarios where you will not have GNSS available. Maybe you are in, an, in, a, in a garage or something like that. And with Wi-Fi, you can still keep tracking of where the vehicle is without the GNSS limitation. 
Here we have an example we made with a customer in Buenos Aires too um, for an asset tracker. Yes, as you can see, the the messages painted in purple are, are sold with uh, Wi-Fi LBAs in the VLON platform, and this is a device that went from uh, the city going through uh, a highway, yeah, a highway until the Buenos Aires seaport. Um, as you can see here in this test, GNSS was turned off because we were making an LBS, a Wi-Fi LBS uh, uh, sample demonstration. And you can see how the, 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 the device has a lot of points in a situation where you are on a highway at a 100 kilometers per hour. Yeah, that is awesome, that is awesome. Of course, you can see that the, the points, the lines between the points are off of the, of the highway, but that is because uh, uh, an asset tracker doesn't have the, the, the turn angle uh, trigger, so you will have the points inside the, the highway, but the lines uh, go out. So this is a very important uh, test we did. Uh, it took a lot of work together with the R&D of Bialons. We are, we are very happy with this. Uh, this is a new technology, and we have currently uh, several projects, especially in America, in Mexico, in North America, um, for asset tracking using especially Wi-Fi LBS because of the power autonomy. To give you an example, here in my pocket, I have one of the G-series. It's a portable tracker, yes? I will show some pictures now. This device has a rechargeable battery. Yes, it's smaller than a cell phone. The battery autonomy uh, in a scenario of one report per day with GNSS on, it's like one year, OK? One report per day. If you turn off GNSS and you enable Wi-Fi LBS, the battery autonomy goes up to more than two years. This is, this is really important. It's a game changer especially for asset tracking. To go to another scenario, uh, in, a, in a pharmaceutic uh, or cold chain monitor monitoring, where you have like um, half of the day, 12 hours, reporting every 15 minutes, and the rest of the day, when the, when the goods are static, you report every four hours, uh, you have with GNSS on, like 10 days autonomy. If you turn off GNSS, you go to two months autonomy. That is a game changer. So, as I mentioned before, some of the application is food, uh, cold chain monitoring for food, for, for pharmaceutics, valuable tracking. Valuable tracking are money bags that go from maybe from one bank to the other. A lot of time, those bags are inside of a building, so you don't have GNSS. GNSS doesn't work there. And the rest of the time, maybe they are inside uh, a truck that also it's, it's, it's too, the, the metal is too thick, and there is no GNSS also inside of the valuables. So having the, the GNSS on makes no sense. It will only leak your battery. Also dangerous chemicals, and in fact, any application where you need to track anything, goods, assets, vehicles, anything, that can change between scenarios. You can turn one technology on, off, or all, this, all at the same time and solve um, the position the best way. Finally, to go to our, our products, we have four families. G-Series, it's the good tracker I showed you before. It's a portable uh, device with rechargeable battery, temperature and humidity sensors. The A-Series is an asset tracker uh, with a much bigger um, bat internal battery, but IP68 uh, with no rechargeable battery. It's a replaceable battery, not rechargeable. B-series, vehicles tracker, okay. of course we have the vehicles tracker for, for, for the big uh, and mature business. Uh, we have, as I will show you, several ones for trailer applications, uh, the, the basic one, low cost for, for uh, insurance companies in 2G or in LTE, CAT1, CAT10. And finally, the E-series, that it's the environmental uh, sensors uh, with temperature and humidity. Good tracker. Interesting thing, 
Wi-Fi, LBS, it's available in all our products. You have it in the G series, in the A series, in the B series. And all of them have uh, BLE enabled. That is why the environmental sensor, that it's a Bluetooth sensor that transmits, it's a beacon transmitting temperature and humidity every, every few seconds, uh, will be detected automatically by any of these uh, devices and transmit it to the platform later. Trailer applications in the B-series with uh, solar panel ready uh, device. The, the, the it has a big um, internal battery too for long autonomy, but if you want, you can recharge also by solar panel. And as I mentioned before, the basic the vehicle tracker, mostly for um, high volume insurance companies where you have to go to something very basic to optimizing cost. Okay, thank you very much again for the opportunity. Thank you for listening. I hope you found this e information important. Okay, thank you. Hello. Just a small question because I'm not a technician. Um, I maybe I missed this part. In order to um, to use these uh, several modes, do we need to to, ch uh, to change between them? Um, manually or it can be changed automatically according to the scenarios? You, you can change automatically according to the scenarios. Of oh. course, you can do for different applications. Each application may have its own logic, okay, and can be solved uh, easily from the platform side. From the when you're talking about the applic different applications, that means there are um, different applications, but or you need to change in between the applications, or you can do this in one place in your platform? Uh, in, the, in the platform, you, of course, you can change it from the platform. You can uh, program the working mode. For example, if uh, you have no, no if, if you are uh, focusing on GNSS, uh, on Wi-Fi location, okay? And you see that there are no networks, no networks, no networks, uh, no MAC addresses of Wi-Fi routers, maybe you want to automatically turn on the GNSS. Turn on the GNSS, get at least a location, maybe turn it off again, and handle it in the platform. But in this case, we should decide this scenario. Yeah. Or, or the platform can decide for us according to the situation in the city or, or on the way. Yeah, you have to decide because every, every application is different. So you have to make the decision and, and the working logic, yes, and the device can handle any of them. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, no, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, the question, the asset tracker is rechargeable or... Uh, Sorry? The, asset the, tracker? Yeah, the, the asset tracker. They have a rechargeable battery or is a disposable battery? No. The, you have the, the goods tracker no, that we call tracker. the G-series. Yes. This is rechargeable by USB. The asset tracker, it doesn't have a rechargeable battery. It has a replaceable battery. Okay. You can replace it but not recharge it. Disposable. Then. Yeah. That asset tracker has a battery autonomy of seven years at one report per day with GNSS enabled. If you turn off GNSS, battery the life is... The reporting life is based on a re number of reports or uh, you says one report a day. What happens is we enable to six reports a day. Yeah, we have to make the, the calculations. Of course, the reports, the number of reports is one of the things that affect the most the battery autonomy, but it's not the only thing, okay? Uh, so we have tools to calculate the, the estimated autonomy, and, but a quick, a quick uh, calculation, it's if one report per day, it's seven years, for six reports per day, it will be more than one year, okay? But we can do the, the fine calculation of the estimated time and, and can give it to you. Okay, when uh, the tracker goes to deep uh, sleep mode yeah. or totally off the antennas? Uh, when the tracker goes to deep sleep mode, yes. yeah, the, the cellular module is turned off and for the B-series you have below uh, 0.5 million per power consumption. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's thinking that 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 uh, deep sleep mode uh, came from motorcycle applications where you have very small batteries outside, and if you con if your power consumption in standby is quite high, you may drain the the motorcycle uh, battery and 
that is a big problem, okay? And the BC resource, so let me mention it now that you took it, uh, the, the, power, the, in, the input power range is from 9 volt to 100 volt, also to cover scooter applications and applications where you have 70 volt batteries. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the format of uh, presentation you presented. Okay. And regarding the Wi-Fi uh, location, from where it will be getting the precise uh, like location of the Wi-Fi in order to give it to the tracker? Uh, let the me see. The Wi-Fi position. Yeah, the Wi-Fi position, we send to, to the platform, we send the MAC addresses, yes? And it's the platform the one that solves the position with that MAC address list. Yeah, the MAC address is for a Wi-Fi. So yeah. any Wi-Fi with a MAC address will be transmitting its location. Yeah. So its location would be known from the... Uh, the uh, how the Wi-Fi router location yes. is known, that's the question. No, that's a, uh, an interesting question. Uh, no, the Wi-Fi router doesn't know its location, okay? They only transmit their MAC address. And the database generation of Wi-Fi routers and locations, um, if you read the original white papers, um, they say that um, some uh, vehicles are running in the street, uh, making that database, okay? But as we know today, our cell phones, our cell phones are collecting a lot of data and sharing that data with a lot of other companies and databases. So today, the, the Wi-Fi database is mainly getting information from our cell phones, okay? When that is why uh, most of the time, uh, when you resolve a Wi-Fi location, you will see that the location is in the street. Okay. Yes? Not in the inside the building. Because inside the building, your cell phone lost the GPS, the GPS location. Yes. The last time your GPS was located was at the door. So, and that you yeah. will see. Unless, uh, you, unless if you uh, activate the Wi-Fi uh, tracking for, like, for example, for iOS. Yeah. Uh, but my question, like, uh, for the Wi-Fi, uh, in the uh, Pentagon you draw, uh, yeah. you mentioned that the accuracy of the Wi-Fi routers is uh, far away from the GNS. But uh, which is more accurate, uh, whether uh, the, the Wi-Fi or the other one? The yeah, or one? the cellular LBS? Yes. Yeah, no, it's the Wi-Fi, because Wi-Fi, as I, I, I said before. Because, because it, you mentioned it take it from the cellular. Yeah, yeah, but so a Wi-Fi router has 20 meter around 20 meters of, of okay. coverage, okay? So if you see a router with the device, you are no far, uh, no, more, no farther than 20 meters from the device. A GNSS can solve, if it can solve the location, you will have 2.5 meter, one meter of error. So the GNSS is the more precise one. But 20 meters is not bad at all, especially if you don't have GNSS. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And uh, regarding the goods tracker, so does it uh, have any other sensors like uh, humidity, uh, yeah. temperature? Yeah, totally. And uh, how, how much it's affecting the, temperature, uh, the, the life of the battery? No. Uh, okay. For a single, single message a day or with a different thing? Perfect, yeah, uh, the Goods Tracker has temperature, humidity, and a light sensor, yeah? Light because, sensor. yeah, it was mainly focused for cold chain. That is why it has those sensors. It also has G sensor, so with the accelerometer you can trigger events Movement, too. Yeah. yeah, and um, the sensor power consumption, uh, it's not important compared to the transmission. So, in fact, uh, in uh, one report per day, you can have, as I said, uh, with Wi-Fi LBS, more than two years autonomy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, regarding the temperature in the pharmaceutical industry, so temperature, it couldn't be only one time a day. It should be like the whole day. Yeah. So are we talking a whole day temperature monitoring or it's only a single uh, time during the time where the device will wake up and send the no. message? No, you can, uh, you can program a sample up. period, okay? You can sample temperature and all the sensors as long as you want. And the reporting period, it's different. It's when you connect to the platform. If the sampling period is smaller, you will send in the reporting period uh, more than one data. If they are the same, you will measure and send information. 
If you have more data, maybe if you, you can report every 12 hours and sample every one hour. Okay, every 12 hours you will send uh, information of 12 samples. Interesting. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you very much.